it's all about motion. It's all about motion in order to capture that very special light. So the last photo exhibit that I had was all about stillness. It was macro photography, taking these very little delicate leaves, not breathing, having your uh, everything composed and still in order to capture the essence of that dead leaf. This is the opposite. This is all about movement, camera movement, gesturing, you know, the wind and the leaves. So this, a lot of people came and thought it was fireworks. It's not. It's actually looking through the tree, through motion, and capturing a little bit about that special light, the sunset, or the orange that you see is the orange from the sun setting but you're seeing it through this dancing motion of the trees. I was photographing these beautiful majestic trees that I was surrounded by at a certain time of day which is a no-no for photographers, which is about noon. It's the most overexposed, strongest light. And I thought, instead of shying away from that time, let me play with that strong light and see what can be done. And I started to get this really interesting painterly effect. And I managed to play with the whiteness of this sharp light as if it was white paint. And then I would go very late at night. I'll show you there. I would go very late at night because in Norway in August, which is when I took my photos, the dusk, the sunset is actually really late. So within a certain time span, you get this really interesting blue light, which again you would normally photograph under because there's not enough light, but I actually played with it. And what I wanted to invite you to notice is that this is pretty much the same or similar tree than that green one. They look entirely different. But the only difference between these two pictures is the light. It's the nature of the quality of the light that makes all the difference. I wasn't quite sure what to print the photos on for the series, and so I did a test. I took this picture, which I thought had quite a big breadth of pictures, of colors, and a lot of contrast. And I had this very same picture printed on about 10 different kinds of papers, different materials, metal, glass, you name it. And the one rendition that I thought was best, or at least what it is that I thought was best, was this German photographic paper called Hannemühle paper. It's photographed Hannemühle. And I thought it had this incredible sort of velvety texture to the point where many people actually want to touch it. Don't, it's very fragile. Um, it gave a very good rendition of the range of color. And I thought the contrast and the depth of the black was actually quite astonishing. What is it as a painter that I've done um, and how did I bridge the gap between my painterliness and my photographic work? So for a long time I've had this issue, I was thinking, you know, I, I one way as a painter and I'm a different way as a photographer, and how do I bridge the gap? And suddenly, this summer, I, I extraordinarily managed to turn my camera, not in an object to take just regular photos, it magically somehow turned into a painting brush. So I was able to, thanks to the light, thanks to the slowing down of time with exposure time and motion, I was able to paint with the light. So what I love about it is when you look at it, you're not quite sure, you're puzzled, you're not quite sure. Are you looking at a painting? Are you looking at a photograph? And what it is, is a painting with light transformed through photography.